Hi everybody, welcome back. This is our next instructional video on the Salem Kettlebell Training YouTube channel. Please subscribe below. The heart style plank is something that we can use as a standalone exercise, but more importantly, as a stepping stone to creating really safe, really effective other exercises. Things that the plank uh, is a part of. A hip hinge, a deadlift, a swing, a clean, a snatch, a press, a Turkish getup, a goblet squat, a front squat, a bent press, a windmill, a jerk, a push press, uh, it's part of everything. Um, in terms of training that we do here at Salem Kettlebell, the only movements that aren't really planks are uh, floor presses and um, bench presses. And the only reason those aren't planks is because we set up with a significant arch. Everything else we do has a plank or the notion of a plank uh, as part of it. So today we're gonna go through the plank step by step. First, uh, and this is something that isn't necessarily applied to all those other exercises, but as a standalone plank, it is a big part of it, is a hollow body position. Also, if we take the plank um, to the TRX straps for a row or to the pull-up bar for a pull-up, uh, that hollow body position is really crucial. We don't want to get into hyperextension uh, or even neutral uh, spinal position with either of those exercises, not because it's necessarily injurious, although it could be, uh, but because it doesn't maximize the effectiveness of those exercises. So the hollow body position uh, is the first step in the hard style plank. What do I mean by hollow body? Well, first I'm gonna show you three spinal positions. Now this is gonna look like I'm pretty hyperlordotic here or I have sway back, to coin the lay term, but this is actually my spinal neutral. Okay. Spinal neutral. Hyperextension. You can see I'm pressing my abdomen forward, leaning my upper body back, and now I've got a very significant sway going on back here as opposed to my spinal neutral. And now we're gonna go into the hollow body position, which I'm gonna use a breath to create. So for me, this is my hollow body position. This is my spinal neutral, and this is hyperextension, ouch. So, that hollow body position, I'm gonna get there with a breath out. Doesn't have to be a very powerful breath, just a complete exhalation. So, so when I keep blowing out, I get a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt, anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, and my rib cage collapses as I continue to exhale. So I've got my rib cage sort of up, in my neutral spine position, really up in my hyperextended position. I'm gonna breathe out. And I'm getting that posterior pelvic tilt. By the way, my glutes are very on already as I've exhaled. And my rib cage is coming down. So now I've got my version of a hollow body position. So the hollow body is part of the plank. It also, if you are given to hyperextension, as I am, as sort of your natural posture, using the breath to find a little bit of a hollow body position for a lot of other exercises can be really helpful uh, as well. So at the top of a deadlift, for example, not laying back into hyperextension, but using the breath to finish nice and neutral at the top so you don't have any funky compressive or sheer forces going on on the discs of the lower back. 
So our hollow body position is part of our claim. So too is the principle of hyper irradiation. So we've talked about action principles in the past. The principle of hyper irradiation is uh, that which suggests that by creating more tension in the grip, we can create more tension and get more motor recruitment elsewhere in the body. That's a big part of the plank. We're also going to be exploring something new in the plank, and that's the idea of a trigger. So we start our plank in the hollow body position with tension going on, so we've got that principle of hyper-irradiation already in place. When it's time to go, a lot of times what you'll hear me say when we're uh, training in person is, and pull. And that pull of drawing the elbows towards the toes, the toes towards the elbows, while you're in that hollow body position and you're creating all that tension, is an example of what in strength sport we call a trigger. So you've got a lot of tension, and then right before the effort, you create even a little bit more tension. So you've got maybe like a six out of 10 in terms of how much tension you can create in that uh, hard style plank just with hyper irradiation. Now I say pull and everything goes up to an eight or nine. Now I still want you to have a little bit of room left. You're not gonna empty the tanks. You're not gonna create simply as much tension as you can uh, because a lot of times what happens is we lose our breath when we create that much tension. In the hard style plank, we're going to be doing what's called breathing behind the shield. So this is another version of power breathing where I'm in an isometric contraction. So I don't want to use big breaths to create more tension. That big breath is going to create some laxity when I inhale. It's gonna create a little bit of laxity in the muscles that I'm trying to keep engaged in that hollow body position. So I don't wanna take big breaths. I'm gonna take shallow little breaths. And with each breath out, I'm gonna to try to get tighter, 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 tighter. Um, and that's how we're going to use our breath in the hard style plank, breathing behind the shield. So from the get go, we're creating a lot of tension with the principle of hyper irradiation. We're gonna do that in a hollow body position. We're going to use the trigger when I say pull. We're gonna take that tension from six to about an eight or nine out of 10, but not all the way to a 10 because we still wanna have a little bit of room to breathe behind the shield, okay? So it looks like this. I'm gonna get down on my elbows with my elbows shoulder width apart. My feet are either going to be together or up to the same width that they are when I'm in my swing, so I could get um, a little bit wider than shoulder width stance. I'm gonna get up into position. I'm gonna use a breath to get into that hollow body. And now I'm gonna squeeze my fist. That's my principle of hyper irradiation. And now I'm gonna trigger and breathe behind the shield. I wanna create enough tension that in this hard style plank, I'm not going to last for longer than about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. Typically in planking, uh, especially as it is performed in yoga, we have a plank where you are taking more full breaths. You don't have maximum tension going on and it's how long are you going to be able to hold this plank? That has its reasons, but it's not the way we're going to plank uh, here at Salem Kettlebell. We're going to plank intensely for a brief period of time and learn how to harness that tension in our body for near maximum efforts, typically in other movements besides that of just planking. A push-up is a plank in motion. The tension that you create in that hollow body position should be held throughout 
your push-up if you're doing push-ups as part of your training program. You're still gonna have a little bit more breath than uh, what we just demonstrated in breathing behind the shield. You might take a little bit of a power breath. Um, as opposed to that breath behind the shield like we did in the plank. But the level of tension and the spinal position, the position of the head, the shoulders, the spine, the hips, the feet are all the same uh, throughout the push-up. The only reason the angle changes is because of elbow extension. So get good at a plank and you will be better at push-ups. Uh, it's like trying to, um, what are they, oh, in uh, Strong First we call it trying to shoot a cannon from a canoe. If I am trying to do a strong squat or a strong press or a strong push up or a strong pull up and I don't have the tension here, it's like trying to shoot a cannon from a canoe. So the cannon fires, boom, I'm trying to do my exercise but the ball just drops right in the water and instead my boat moves uh, out of the way. So um, if you're tight in the midsection, which you will learn by practicing this hard style plank, everything else that you do is going to feel stronger. I hope this has helped you uh, learn a couple of things, not just about the plank itself, but about how to incorporate the action principles into these exercises. So uh, we started off in the hollow body position, finding a little bit of posterior pelvic tilt, getting the rib cage to sort of press down and not flare up. Uh, we practiced hyper irradiation, creating tension in the grip to increase tension everywhere else in the body. We practiced the trigger, taking that tension from about a six to an eight or nine when we start the exercise. Uh, and we practice breathing behind the shield, a different version of power breathing specific to exercises like the plank where we're holding uh, an isometric contraction. So the more often we can incorporate those action principles into our exercises, the stronger and safer our exercises will be. The plank is your foundation for almost every other strength exercise that you're going to be performing. So between the hip hinge and the plank, we're now ready to deadlift.